God bless you, family. God, welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. And we're here again on the Blaze Bible Study, the Morning Devo edition. So this is a, a day that we could be glad and rejoice. God got us up today. If we're connecting, if we're connected together right now, God has a word for us. And I'm excited to receive that word and to believe in that word and to activate that word and apply that word in my day-to-day living. Amen. Because we're not, if we're not applying the word of God into our day to day, then we're just flying uh, on our own, right? We're on self um, autopilot, and that's not the way we should be living if we're Christ followers. So, welcome everybody back. It's another episode on the podcast and a live stream as well. So, let me get things together here as I introduce um, today's morning devotional. Amen. And God is faithful. He's good at everything that he does. Amen. I apologize for looking down. Um, this morning, they just updated my my Facebook page and turned it into some kind of uh, professional dashboard. So they moved things around and they changed numbers on my views and all this other stuff. So, And then again, uh, here we go again with another um, portion of what um, the social media will do um, to someone like me. So anyway. Today we're talking about every tear, every tear that you shed, every tear that you cried, um, man or woman. I put purposely, I put on the cover of today's Morning Devo, a man crying because for whatever reason, the culture is telling men that we're not allowed to cry. We're not allowed to show emotion. We have to look like we have it all together. Never let them see you sweat and all these mantras that are worldly and, you know, unbiblical. Because my Lord and my Savior, Jesus the Christ himself, he shed tears. He wept, the Bible says. The shortest verse in the Bible is that Jesus wept. Amen. And if the man of man, Jesus the Christ, God, 100% God, 100% man, if he cried, um, what, what, what would be my issue of me not crying? Amen. As a matter of fact, um, science will tell you, the medical scientists will tell you, And the medical professionals will tell you, holding tears in, it's actually not good for us. Amen. It's actually a release and it has some attributes that work out for our benefit. Amen. So do you have a personal relationship with God? Let me just ask you that first and foremost, because if you don't have a personal relationship with God, then this might not make a lot of sense to you. But if you do have a personal relationship with God, listen to this. God sees your tears and he makes a point. To let you know that today, that God sees your tears, he sees your sorrows, he sees your pain, and he wants to make that a point for you today. So we're live now. So whether or not I'm live, whether or not you're watching this live or watching this later on, on a rebroadcast or listening it to it later on the audio only podcast, don't ever hesitate to leave a question, comment, concern, or prayer request. And that's what we're here for. We're doing this life together. Amen. So whether I'm live or not, don't hesitate. If you want to privatize, no no problem, no issue with that. If you're good on socials and you know how to inbox me or DM me, direct message me, we can do that behind the scenes so that way the public won't see your question, comment, concern, or prayer request. We could also email me at djsandrock at soulwinnerswithaz.org. And if you're unsure of all of that, and you don't want to go that route, you could always join me at live.soulwinnerswithaz.org. Join me there. We can hang out there as well. There's a live chat there. There's also interactive live Bible right there on that app. There's a place where you could connect with me on my socials, on my um, YouTube page, which is DJ Sam Rock. And you could subscribe to the podcast if you're not already subscribed. If you have not already subscribed to the podcast, what are you waiting for? There's over 900 now episodes on the podcast, believe it or not. And I've probably covered every topic from the letter A to Z by now. God is good. Amen. And that's how great of a God he is. And he continues to give me more and more and more because his word continues to give more and more and more every day, every time I read it. That's why I suggest you always read the Bible for yourself so you can let the Lord speak to your heart and speak to your current situation right now. And also over there on live.soulwinnerswithaz.org, you have a place um, to to subscribe to the whole entire Soul Winners um, online church there. We got to do it takes less than 40 seconds, I promise you. A picture, the name that you want me to address you by, and your best, very best email so I can connect with you outside of the matrix, off the grid of, um, you know, 
the social media system. Amen. So let's pray. After we pray, we're going to take a minute to pray. After we pray, we're going to share this out for like 60 seconds or so with as many people that come to our heart and our mind, right? And I didn't even share not even one thing out yet. Um, so I'm right there with you sharing as we share this out. So let's pray. Um, and remember, any question, comment, concern, anything during um, the morning Devo, shout it out. Don't be afraid. Amen. We're in this together. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you see every single tear that I shed, every single brother and sister in you, that we shed our tears. You've seen all of them. You've seen our sorrows. You've seen our pains. And we thank you, Lord God, for being there with us through those times of pain and sorrow and suffering. And whatever we're facing today, Lord God, I, I pray, Lord God, that we would remind ourselves and you remind us by way of your Holy Spirit that you are present in those troubles and those times and those sorrows and those pains, Lord God. I speak life over every single person that's going through a situation that they feel like there's no way out, that they feel like there's no hope. I pray for them as well, Lord God, in your healing name, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that you will comfort them, guide them, protect them, strengthen them, encourage them, fulfill their lives, fulfill their dreams, fulfill their passion and desires that you have placed in their hearts, Lord God right now as we speak. And I pray, Lord God, that you would set forth your awkward angels that are on assignment for our lives to do what is right in the path that is right for us. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray this by faith. I hope and pray, Lord God, that someone would be reminded of your love, your grace, and your mercy over their lives as I'm reminded of your grace, love, and mercy over my life and my family's life. So I speak life to all my family, to all my friends, and every follower here, and that's going to come on later on. I speak life over their lives in the holy name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, and those who agree with me say amen and amen. So let's do it. Let's take 60 seconds to share this out. I got a lot of sharing to do. I didn't even start the first share yet. So I'll be in the 60 seconds with you sharing this out with as many people. And when we come back, we're going to hit our first scripture, which is Psalm chapter 56, verse number 8. Psalm 56, verse number 8. I'll be right back. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Welcome back. Let's go for it. Let's hit up the first scripture. God bless you, Brother Robert. God bless you, Robbie Newborn in the building. God bless you, my brother, my friend. Welcome to the morning, Devo. I'm going to head right into my presentation and let's get into it. Let's see what the Lord has for us today when it comes to our tears and him being with us in our sorrow and in our pain. Things happen in life, man, and God knows what's going to happen before they happen to us. So I think he prepares us and even if we feel like we're not prepared to go through what we need to go through for his glory, right? Um, he has a way of preparing us. And I think the main way he prepares us is through his word. The more of the word of God that I have in my life and the more the, of the word of God that you can get into your life, I think that will prepare you for the days to come. Amen? Because his word is alive. And we went through that. And it's the truth that the Bible claims. And I'm going to declare it as well. Amen? Let's go for it. So we see that every tear that God sees, right? He sees our tears. He sees our sorrow. He sees our pain. And he knows all of them, right? He knows all of it. So we are not alone in this, man. Um, don't ever feel like you're alone because God's with you through every tear. Psalm chapter 56, verse number 8. The Bible says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. So I purposely put a man crying because this culture is saying that men are not supposed to cry. Amen. This culture is actually trying to 
teach our children that you're not necessarily a man, you're not necessarily a woman, it's your preference. And a whole lot of stuff is going on. And if you don't see that as a spiritual thing, then you need to look again. Not everybody who's making these claims about not being a man or a woman, binary, non-binary, you know, trans and all this other stuff, um, that is not all mental issue. I know everybody says, oh, they, they have mental issues. That is actually what the Bible says, principalities and forces. And we're not fighting each other um, with flesh and blood. It's principalities and forces in higher places and higher realms. So there's a spiritual battle for the soul. The enemy is wreaking havoc. These are the end times. We are the end time evangelists. We are the end time apostles, preachers, teachers, and prophets. We are living in the times that the Bible calls the end times because of all the things that are happening in the scripture. But don't be um, lied to anymore by the enemy. Let's listen to what the word of God is speaking. God says he keeps track of all our sorrows. Every time we shed a tear, the Bible says he's collecting those tears in his bottle. Whatever that bottle looks like, he's recording each one in his book. That's the word of God right there for our lives. There's no other God like my God. Amen. He knows all things. And although he knows all things that I'm thinking, every single day he still loves me anyway. Amen? You know what I'm talking about. Those thoughts that fly through your head, that are not righteous, that are not godly, they fly through your head. And if we're not careful, we need to take those thoughts and keep them under the obedience of Christ. Or else we'll activate or we'll act out on some of those thoughts that are in our head. Every single day. Because if you're living on this earth, like I'm living on this earth, um, we're dealing with darkness we're dealing with things that will cause us pain and sorrow and suffering because this is a broken, fallen world. The original intent of God for our lives and for this planet is not what's happening right now. God is not running the world system. He is sovereign over the universe, over the world, over all things, but he's not running the world system. He gave that job temporarily to the devil. You can fight me on that. It's in the scripture. Amen. So, God is keeping track of all your sorrows. That's number one. That's the first point I need to make. I need to remind myself too. Amen? Because when I'm going through stuff, it feels like right you're all alone when you're going through something. And the enemy will say, yeah, man, nobody cares. You know, you're shedding tears. You're not supposed to cry. You're a man. This, that, and the third. He starts sending all these words to your, to your mind and to my mind. But that's why it's refreshing and it's powerful to read the word of God for yourself. And you know what I think is even more powerful than just reading the word and taking it in mentally? I think it's more powerful speaking it out, amen, into the atmosphere and see what the word of God, the living word of God would do in the atmosphere. It would start changing and transforming your atmosphere. You'll sense it. You'll know it. I don't know how many times people have walked into my recording studio where I have the word of God playing 247 on an app, right? It's playing 247. They walk into this room. Walk into the studio and they say, man, it feels like real peaceful in here. People fall asleep all the time in here, man. I fall asleep all the time in here because it's peace in this room, peace in this whole house, but especially in this room where the voice is speaking 247, the word of God. Amen. Now that's a, a, a tip right there for every believer, every brother and sister in Christ um, that want to change the atmosphere in their home, in their studio, in their workplace, in their school. Turn on the word of God and let that thing play 247 or for the amount of time that you're wherever in the place where you need the atmosphere to change and see what happens. I challenge you to do it. Amen. So that verse reminds us, right, that God is a personal God. Because I asked you earlier, right, do you have a personal relationship with God, a personal relationship? This whole gospel is personal to me, but no, it's not private. How God changed and transformed my life. Yeah, that's personal, but no, it's not private. I will have my testimony. I will share my testimony. Personal, but not private. We serve a personal God. Like he has, a, we have a personal relationship. That's why a lot of religions, they don't get what we're, what we're trying to tell them. Because um, they say, well, um, humans and God, there's no way to, con- to make the connection. God is all powerful. He's all might. Yes, he is. All of those things. But yet Jesus said, you know, he don't long, no longer curse up, calls us his servants. He calls us friends. 
Jesus said he didn't come to be served, but to serve and to give his life up as a ransom. The Bible says that there was some people in the scriptures that God said, you're my friend. Personal relationship. It's not about um, God being up in the sky looking down on us. And every single time we make a mistake, every time we um, say something out of turn, that he's going to stomp us and, and wipe us out. Amen. That would be like just a, a God, like it's like a, 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 a dictator God, like a, a warden God, like a, a police God. No, but the God that's in the scriptures is a personal. All Look through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. You'll see God speaking, walking, talking with the people, his creation. Amen. One on one, talking to um, all the nation, talking through a prophet. It's a personal thing, personal relationship with God. So if you don't know if you have a personal relationship with God, amen, I suggest you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see how Jesus approached the people because Jesus is God in the flesh. Amen. And if you don't find that to be a personal thing, then I I don't know what to tell you because God wants to have a personal relationship and that personal relationship. You'll go public right away with it because you'll start noticing that he changes you. He changes your mindset. He He gives renews your heart. He gives you different desires. Amen. Different passions. And he will really be glorified through your life. You'll be laying on the on sick, laying hands on the sick and they shall recover because you're invoking the powerful name of Jesus. And you're reading scriptures and you're not only reading them, you're believing them. And you're not only a hearer of the word, but you're a doer of the word. That's all because God wants a personal relationship with us. Amen. So it looks like in Psalm 56, 8, that God sees our sorrows. He sees our pain. He's collecting our tears in his bottle, whatever that looks like. Amen. And he's recording each one of those tears in his book because he knows we're going to go through things on this side of eternity for sure. Let me give you a bonus scripture. Amen. God is good. Revelation, the last book of the scriptures in the Bible, Revelation 21, 4. The Bible says he, God, will wipe every tear from their eyes. So we can say God will wipe every tear from our eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Because I'm tired of the right people dying. I'm tired of the sorrow. I'm tired of crying. I'm tired of feeling the pain. All these things are gone forever. And how do you know that's true, Sam? Well, the scripture says it. I believe in the scripture and it's true. But I really believe that's for believers. Amen. The opposite applies. Right? If you're rejecting the gospels, you're rejecting Jesus, you're rejecting God, and you're trying to do your own thing, he will not wipe away your tear, tears from your eyes. And there will be more death for you, more sorrow for you, more crying for you, and more pain for you. Those things will be forever going on in your life, separated from a holy, loving, righteous God. Amen? So there is bad news in the good news. The bad news is that if you reject all the good news, you're on your own. And then there's really some pain coming towards you. Amen? But he's going to wipe away every tear from us, our eyes. Right. No more death. You know, I have real hard time when I go into like literally when I go into uh, funerals. Right. I don't know. I, I try to look at the at the, you know, the people there. I don't know whether to cry, to laugh, rejoice, to, you know, to, to mourn because everybody's going through all kind of different emotions. And I believe that we're going through all different kind of emotions because we know deep down inside of us, whether you're a Christian or not, you know deep down inside that death is not right. We weren't created to die. So that's why when we lose a loved one, we lose a family member, when we, we lose a friend that dies, we feel all these emotions. Amen, people. I only know I only met one person that his brother had died. This is a true story. And he was, he was atheist. He used to always curse out my Jesus. He used to say the F word to my Jesus right in my face and to another brother in Christ all the time. We never knew why he would do that, but he was so angry at God. So we found out that his brother had passed. So me and my brother in Christ, we went to the, to the young man and we said, man, we, we're, we're sorry um, to hear about your loss, your brother, and uh, we'll be praying for you. Then he went on. He got angry. He said, F your God. F your Jesus. You know, my, my 
my brother died because those things happened, you know, and he said how his brother died in uh, medical terms. And he said, these just these things just happened. He was furious and he walked away. Never reconciled with that man. I don't know what was the, the issue that he had, but he that's an emotion, though. It's called anger. But he was going through pain, sorrow, and, you know, he lost his brother. So we, we backed off off of that. And me and my brother in Christ, we prayed for him, regardless if he wanted the prayer or not. Um, you can't stop our prayers. Amen. So we know deep down inside that death is not supposed to be. That's why people take it differently. Before I got saved, my dad had died when I was only 15 years old and I wasn't saved yet. When he died, I became an angry teenager all the way till I was 30 years old. I was angry. You know why I was angry? Because I felt that God, even though I didn't believe him, I didn't trust him. You know, I I didn't want no parts with him until I was 30 years old. I just believed that in my heart, there was something in me that said, this is not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be losing loved ones. We're not supposed to die. So I blamed it on the one who I I could only imagine at that time was the one who gave us life. And he took his life. So I felt like he was, I thought that guy had something against me. I said, oh, he took my dad away because, you know, I'm not going to church and I'm not doing the religious stuff. That's the way I really thought. So I got really angry. People didn't really know I was angry because I was always hanging out, you know, numbing the pain, you know, crying in, in the secret places. Um, so I would take out my anger on drugs, sex, and alcohol and women and girls and all that stuff. I was very angry because that death thing, like, so I, that's why I don't know how to respond at funerals. Amen. So when you attend my funeral, listen, be go there happy, celebrate, play music. I'm not going to be in that casket any anyway. My spirit is going to be with the Lord. I'm going to be rejoicing. So, you know, speak of the good things, um, the good memories. Amen. If you when you attend mine, because I know when I go to others, I'm like, I don't know what to do here because, you know, uh, I've been to celebrations of life after funerals because I believe that's what believers are supposed to do. We're supposed to celebrate the life that was led by the person. Now, the tricky part is since God is wiping away our tears as believers, he's taking away all the death and the sorrow, crying and the pain uh, that belongs to the believer in Christ. But the tricky thing is when someone dies, a relative, friend or that didn't have Christ, what do you do then? That's when I'm really quiet at those funerals. I don't know what's about to pop up. I don't know if, you know, if it's just going to be about people passing out and feeling the pain of the loss or anything like that because there is no, um, they mourn differently. The world mourns differently than the believers. We don't mourn like the world that mourns for their loved ones that they lost because they don't have no hope. We have hope and we trust that we're going to be in a place after this place that every tear will be wiped out from our eyes. That's why I don't believe that we hang out, that we die and hang out and be with our family members as guardian angels like people say. I know it sounds cute, but it's not biblical. Why would God show me, uh, take me out of here and be in his glorious place with him and then show me what's happening down here again? Um, that won't make me happy. That will cause me to cry again. That will cause me to look at death again. That will cause me more sorrow over my life again. And that will cause me to cry and have pain again. So God, that's like torment. Why would God do that? So no, there's no lingering spirits. The only things that act like lingering spirits down here are demons. You can find me on that too. There's scripture. I can back that up. Um, so there's a lot here. Amen. I know it's um, a morning devo. So I try not to really get to involved in these um issues amen i try to just challenge you to go to the word for yourself so there's a lot of truth here some of these truth are going to comfort you they should come all this truth right here should comfort you but i know there's people i can't assume that everybody that's connecting that's connected later that listens to me on the podcast i can't assume they all believe in what i believe i can't assume that they're all christians i can only imagine that the people who receive the word of god receive his blessing receive um his power his you know his holy spirit and that's great but for people right now that are not down with what i'm saying amen let's think about this clearly if the psalmist in the bible says that he knows that God is keeping track of all his sorrows. That he knows that God is collecting all the tears that this psalmist has shed in a bottle. And that he's recording each one of those things in his book. Amen. The psalmist believes that. So I believe the psalmist is getting comfort from that. But imagine if the psalmist was like, I don't know what to do. 
I don't know where I'm at. I'm sharing these tears and I'm going through this pain and there's nobody here to help me, not even God. And what hope does that person have? I believe this is a, a, a psalmist that is looking after hope. He's seeking hope. He's trusting and having faith and believing in the personal relationship that he has with God. That's what it looks like to me. Read Psalm 56 for yourself, the whole chapter. Amen. And you tell me. Amen. If I'm taking this out of context. Revelation 21, 4. Amen. In the last book of the Bible, the 66th book Bible. I'm not talking about the Catholic. Shout out to all my Catholic brothers and sisters. I'm talking about the Catholic Bible. I'm talking about the Christian Bible with 66 books. Revelation 21, 4 says, God will wipe every tear from their eyes. So the psalmist is like, yep, God bottles every single tear. Revelation 21 says, he's wiping away every single tear. So it's like God is doing like going like this to us and putting it in a bottle, man. And he knows that all that pain all the sorrow, all the death that we're facing here on this side of eternity is going to be a greater thing going on in heaven. Amen. This is very temporary. That's why when, when I have my worst days, ever have bad days? Let's be honest, right? When I have my worst days, I'll be like, this, this ain't going to last forever. Amen. The pain doesn't last forever. The sorrow is not going to last forever. My bill collectors aren't, aren't going to be calling me forever for past bills, right? Uh, one time, I got a real arrogant a nasty bill collector that called me. I try to be as polite as I can. They're doing their job. And if I owe money, I owe money. So, you know, I'm going to figure out a way to pay my debt. So, um, but this this person was real nasty, threatening me over the phone, threat, threatening to do this, threatening to do that. So I, I, I got a little bit in the flesh, forgive me, Lord. And I said, wow, you know, you're real arrogant. You're real nasty with me right now. But you guess what? After I'm gone, who are you going to call and ask for these bills? And that's for this, you know, this bill collection. I'm not going to be here forever paying bills. And they were silent for a little while. And I'm like, well, you're here now. I said, yeah, you're right. So let's, let's, let's tone it down, like be more professional, and let's get to the point. It's not because they were throwing outside. He was throwing outside stuff. And I was like, yeah, it's not professional. But, you know, people are people, and people are coming from different places. I don't know how that person's day was going. I can only imagine, I don't know. Any bill collectors out there, um, I can only imagine you get cursed out a lot. Um, the phone hung up on you a lot. So that would take a toll eventually on your attitude towards every caller. That's why I try my best, literally. Me and my, I see my wife do this too. We try to be as kind as we can to people who are calling us for you know, a survey, um, bills or whatever, you know, utilities or whatever. We try to be kind because we don't know how the days are. We don't know how the day's going, but we do know that there's pain. We do know that there's suffering. We know we do know that there's death. We do know that we shed tears. And now, since the psalmist is teaching us and showing us that God keeps track of all those sorrows and those pains, that's a personal relationship. Amen. I cried on shoulders before. Amen. And I've been the shoulder to be cried on. I remember one event we went to with the youth years ago. And I forgot why we ended up at this event. We were invited to this event. It was a youth event. And the preacher was so on fire for the youth, on fire with the word of God. And he, he was saying some things. He was an evangelist, a young evangelist, too, which I'm, I'm so inspired. Every time I see a young preacher, young evangelist, that's on fire for their generation. Amen. It really lights me up and it gives me more hope. So he said something that really triggered. And I literally started crying, right, for, for the youth that I brought. We went like 12 deep. Uh, you know, co-ed, you know, young men and young girls, teenagers. And then we went, we went there to represent and we went there to worship the Lord. And then he, the evangelist said something, I forgot what he said, but then I just started crying and my tears wasn't coming down. My tears were literally going like projectile from the side. And I was, I, I was, I don't know what you call that, the travailing. I, I was crying, man. I was weeping. I wept um, for the youth and for the culture and for everything that was happening at that point. And um, the beautiful thing is some of you started coming and wiping the tears off my eyes. Never experienced that before, amen, from, from any person outside of my own family. And it just humbled me, amen. And it made me feel like they were listening. And uh, they reminded me that they were there, that I was not alone, amen, and that it really mattered. Our tears matter, amen. Our tears matter. Every tear matters that we shed because God sees those tears, Right, doesn't take that for granted. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning. God bless you as well. It's good to see you on the morning Devo. So God sees your tears, and He's making a point today to let you know that. 
Amen. Let us not think that we're alone, abandoned on a deserted island. Oh, we are in this together. Although, like I said, many, many, many people don't believe in the Lord Jesus as being Lord and Savior, as Him being God. Um, they, they're not down with the Christian gospel, the Christian message, the Christian lifestyle. Um, but we are the light of the world and salt of the earth, the Bible says. Jesus said that. Amen. And we're not supposed to make fun even of the worst people, you know, getting killed. We're not supposed to rejoice in that. We're not supposed to, you know, throw parties about people failing and, and going into trouble, even though we might feel that they deserved it. God's wish is that none should perish. Amen. But everyone have eternal life. So if that's God's wish, that should be my wish. I have a personal relationship. You might have a personal relationship with the Lord. Amen. And we already know that we're not supposed to rejoice in somebody else's sorrow and somebody else's pain, regardless, you know, what they did, because judgment doesn't belong to us. And, you know, revenge definitely doesn't belong to us. That's all on God between that God and that person. So it's still going to be a personal thing. People are going to personally be judged by this God of heaven and earth. Amen. Whether you believe or not. And it seems like in the United States, at least where I'm broadcasting from, um, there's really no excuse for people to say that they never heard the gospel. I believe um, at least the, one of the good things that I can see in the United States of America is that we're free to preach the gospel. And there's many people preaching the gospel, doing it through social media, television, radio, um, you know, um, Sirius X, XM, you know, satellite radio and all kind of technology, you know, sharing through podcasts and all that. There's really no excuse. All you got to do is look up Christian or Christian podcasts or, you know, evangelism or whatever. And you'll find true believers, you know, through the whole you have to sometimes you have to sort it all out. because A lot of people are talking nonsense. But if someone's coming from the scriptures, amen, um, I would challenge you always to go to those same scriptures and read it for yourself. There's no secret to what I'm trying to do here on these morning devos. I'm trying to provoke God's word into your life and over your life. Amen. I'm trying to provoke you to stop, you know, believing every other voice that's out there. I want you to believe in the voice of God over your life. So he keeps track of all your sorrows. Psalm 56 verse number eight and Revelation 21 four. He says he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, from our eyes. Every tear matters to God. Amen. And at the end, there will be no more death. Hallelujah. No more sorrow. Hallelujah. No more crying. No more pain. All these things will be gone forever. So that's the hope we have. Amen. When we're going through what we're going through. So I'm out of here. I hope you get something out of these two scriptures. Psalm 56, read the whole chapter. And Revelation chapter 21, read the whole chapter for yourself. So I'm out of here. I bless you all in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.